I would say magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Good day to everyone. It's a great day and thank you Lord for this day that we're about to know and dig on the topic on peace with God. Okay, so doink. question. What is something you are hoping for in the next two to three weeks? Something that you are hoping for in the next two to three weeks. Were you made a promise that it will come? Supposed to be three weeks ago, but it did not arrive. Or maybe where you made the promise that your you will have a promotion, but it did not come. Whatever is the promise, pray for that hoping that it will arrive in the next two to three weeks. Our word for today is found in Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing that you have given me. To share to your people your word. Inspire me, Father God, with the presence of the Holy Spirit. To deliver, Lord, what you want me to say. And thank you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Who washed away my sins. And thank you for the stripes. That my sickness were gone. And thank you for the presence of your people. To listen open our hearts our minds our ears to your words and I pray that we will put it into practice and or act on it thank you for the peace that is coming from you in Jesus name Amen so as the word says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is from Romans 5 verse 1. And as we continue to verse 2, through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope for the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And Christ is our place. For when we were still without strength, In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, such more, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation that is Romans 5 verses 1 to 11 okay Paul explained that those who believe in Christ have been made righteous that we've been studying that from the previous lessons not because of anything they've done but because of what Christ has done for them he went on to say that not only do the believer 
others have God's righteousness, but they also have peace with Him. Paul encouraged the believers to know God and experience the fullness of life in Him. As this is also true for us who put our, uh, our faith in Christ, let us look at what we can have in Christ now that we have been reconciled to God. But first, let me define to you the word justif justified. Justified is mean made righteous into the sight of God, vindicated, sustained, substanti substan substantive, legitimatized, defendant. So that is justified. We were made righteous. So it's no need for us to, to, to work on our righteousness because we were already justified. We were already made righteous. But the only thing is we just need to do something for God, for His kingdom. Just like in the court. When a judge says, justify your facts, reasons, or claims, so we need to show proofs of our present presented claims but with jesus he didn't ask for nothing from us he didn't ask nothing from us but still he laid his life for us to be justified so we can have all the peace and able to get into the righteousness of god justified we don't need to present anything to God to be justified. Just like present to Him that I feed, I feed the hungry, or I visited the sick, or I visited the one in the jail, or maybe I gave generously. Those are run, not, those aren't uh, asked from us anymore when it comes to justification well that's that's another the, the one that i mentioned a while ago is another thing okay because those are good works and they are not bad they are good works that's why they are good works but it will just follow but those will not bring us to justify to be justified it will not made us righteous in the eyes of god okay so we have here the number one the number one thing we we need to know in order for us to have peace with god we can have peace with god by as it says in romans 1 5 1 therefore since we have been justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ the word the word peace used in this passage is the greek word erin which refers to the state of well-being that results from salvation we receive in Christ. We used to be God's enemies. Always. That was, the, that was always the, the, the status before, before we accepted Jesus. We were used to be God's enemies. But now that we have been reconciled to God through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, we can enjoy and grow in our relationship with Him. We have the assurance that God is taking good care of us. Away or outside God's circle will be havoc, cruelty, emptiness, and devastation, and many other more. Peace has no place to find to be found in our hearts for peace will never be welcome to be a portion of our lives for we are all god's enemies yet we were contained through and by the power of jesus death ja that is justification how does having peace with god affect your life how for me I have peace, gives me sweet sleep at night, harmony with all my circumstances. What are my circumstances? It might be financial, it might be health, it might be relational, 
it might be, uh, I mean, professional. So whatever the circumstances that we are facing, we have harmony. Though we are not, we don't have enough money, but we are happy. It's just because we have peace and because we know that God is our provider. We can, I can have reconcilia reconciliation with my dis devastated, damaged life. My life was damaged before, but now it was fixed because of Jesus. And so I can have reconciliation with my previous devastated life. Those devastation or damaged life became a portion of my life testimony. Because it says Romans 8, 8, all things work together for good for those who love God. And all these things, good or bad, that is happening to us, they are all orchestrated by God. It's there. It's a part of, of His plans for our lives to build us, build us, and build us, and never to put us down. But for us to grow and grow and grow. Is it not? So whatever devastation we've been through, guys, add that in your testimony. For it might help others when you share your testimony to other person. It's a portion of our life. Number two, we can hope in God. We can hope in God. Huh, okay. So what does it mean in Romans 5, 2? Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into his, this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. It's just because we have been reconciled with God, we can tap into his grace. Through Jesus, we can now rejoice in hope of the glory of God. This means that we can be confident and look forward to the victory that we have in Him. Jesus did not only reconcile us with God, but also gave us the assurance that we shall be saved by His life. This refers to our future salvation, where we get this to spend eternity with God and also to being saved from the difficulties we face today. So this one is speaking of the future. But yet it says, we have this strength, the strength to face these difficulties of life today because we've been saved. There is already salvation, so there is already help coming from God. And He cannot deny that, God, that help from us. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Ah, the conviction of things not seen. So faith is, I would say, it doesn't have an image. It doesn't have an image. It's just, it's just you having faith in God. Faith doesn't come in material. So how, how can it be faith when it comes in material? Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all, not some, Fill you with all joy and peace in believing, is believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. So, all joy, all peace is coming from the Holy Spirit. How is this hope seen in your life? How is this hope seen in your life? When you have faith? 
whatever you prayed for, consider it done. Answers will come in the right time, timing of God. So once prayed, consider it done. That is my hope. That is my hope. Once prayed, consider it done. And please, guys, don't get back what you, what you have prayed for. Just like, for example, just like, for example, okay, you don't have a job. And you're praying for a job you already prayed for a job lord give me a job that can be sufficient to to support my family and so forth and so on whatever you want from that job and then one month went by two months went by on the two months and a half i want to make a way i will find a way on how to find job so what kind of job are you looking for in fact God said that we have to also help ourselves you know that job that we are praying for it will not just drop in front of us here's the job Blank. no God will deliver you to the right direction. So while you are praying for a job, look for the point or for the, the, the path. Which way? Lord, which way will I go? Which way lead me to the place where you want me to go to find a job? Don't just pray for a job, then sit down and wait. Parang si Juan Tamad. No. When you pray for a job, ask God where you want, where He wants you to go. He wants you to go to Makati and go to this street and go to that building. Go. Because once prayed, considered it done. But we also have to do our portion. Okay. Number three, we can have joy in spite of suffering. In the, that, that, that is in Roman in Romans 5:3. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Thanks, sure. Now that we have been reconciled with God, we can have complete joy despite our suffering this is because we know that what we experience on earth is temporary ultimately we have victory in god our joy is anchored on the truth that jesus christ saved us from the wrath of god and put his favor upon us as it says in romans 5 9 in fact the trials and sufferings we are experiencing are for the strengthening of our character see there is there is also reason why we're experiencing trials and sufferings so that we can be strong in our character we can be a stronger person and as we follow in obedience god we cannot deny him from stripping. We cannot deny. We cannot deny him from, from stripping, melting, molding, and shaping of God's <coughs> through those sufferings. If we need to undergo those sufferings, God is so willing because he's trying to change us from our old ways. He's revealing to us his righteousness. That you have to remove this. You have to, you have to, 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 to uh, uh, that, strip this. And I have to mold you like this. If you were mold before as a jar... God is so willing to break that jar and mold you into a heart. 
reshape you into a heart. That can be the purpose of God. And what, what else can we do? Give it all to God, for He knows what He's doing. You ask, we don't know what we're doing, but God knows. He knows our past, our present, and our future. We, we don't even know what happened to us after this. A moment from now, a minute from now, we don't know what's, what happened, what will happen to us, but God knows. If it's time for Him to call us back, we don't know when. He will just call us, come on, guy. I want you here now. I want you to bless me here now. You're done there. So let us always be ready. What does 1 Peter 5.10 promise to those who are suffering? Let me read to you. To those who are suffering, okay? But may the God of grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while perfect established strengthened and settled you so what was the promise to those who are suffering we were perfected we were established we were strengthened we were settled that is how God promised us from suffering. We are perfected. We are established. We are strengthened. We are settled. How, how, how restful is that? The peace is there. If we were perfected and we were established in our faith, and then God give us the strength to endure, and then He will just settle us. The hands of God are always open that we can lean on to His hands. With that, guys, what area in your life is God strengthening through challenges that you are facing right now? Are there any challenges that you are undergoing right now? How can you respond to that? We, for us, for us who are followers and believers, believers and followers of Christ, and who accepted Him as your Savior and Lord, the favor of God is always on us. We're always favored. So, what will you do differently as we face trials and difficulties? We are, remember, we are favored. But in times of trials and difficulties, how do we react? Do we react the same as the unbelievers? That when trials come, they can have all those cruel words, those hard words, and threatening whoever, even God, challenging God, Remember, God's favor is on you. God's favor is on us. When you do prayer, when you, when you pray to God, we, this is peace, peace with God, right? Thank God. For the peace that He's given you, for the relationship, personal relationship that you have with Him. And having peace with God, you're so close to God. You're so close with Him. And you can just ask Him to reveal more of Himself to you. 
as you seek him every day. And you can also ask God for the grace to rejoice in the midst of difficulties or in the midst of circumstances. That you will be rejoiceful. That makes you different. That makes you different from others. Be rejoiceful with whatever situation you are in. Ask God to increase your faith and strengthen your character because sometimes we have to mirror God people will see us differently if we react to situation differently differently I should say so let us be prayerful and ask for these things We need God and He is offering us peace. What else can we ask for? With that, I will have an altar call for those who want peace in their lives, in their hearts. Just follow this simple prayer of faith put it in your hearts and be blessed heavenly father thank you lord for the lesson thank you lord for your unfailing love thank you lord for you have chosen me lord to be your kid thank you for the blood of jesus that i ask for the washing of my sins and i ask him to come into my life and to reveal himself to me and the presence of the Holy Spirit to dwell in my heart the God shaped hold in my heart that all it's only you God who can feel it in and nothing more teach me to get out from the chair sitting in my heart and sit in there be the driver of my life from this day on in jesus name amen god bless everyone i love you with the love of the lord thank you thank you thank you amen